Hey guys, Miles here, Tactical Hive, joined by our special guest, Tony Blauer, who is a world famous self defense expert. If you guys don't know about Tony, he's been in the self defense industry for a long time, over 40 years. And, you know, he's taught the best out there, different organizations, military, LE, and he has a unique approach to self defense that uh, has made him famous. And um, this is very different from our typical videos because we're not going to be talking about shooting. We're talking about martial arts styles and, uh, you know, what happens potentially before you take out your pistol. So, Tony, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate the time. Yeah, excited. Before we dive into the topic today, we want to thank CCW Safe for bringing you today's video. If you own a gun and you don't have self-defense protection, look into them, guys. It's really going to be helpful if you do ever get into an incident. They're going to help you every step of the way during that second fight. No matter what, even if you were in the right, you were in the wrong, the law is going to come after you criminally, civilly, whatever it is, and you need that protection. They are unlike other companies out there. They're not just going to write you a check. They'll send someone out to you, hold you every step of the way, and uh, guide you through the entire process. So make sure you check them out in the description below. All right, so let's get to it. We're going to be talking about what is the best martial arts style for self-defense. Now, before we dive into this, this is not, this may not be exactly what you guys are thinking because both, both Tony and I are in agreement. I, you know, I've, I've studied, we both study a lot of martial arts, but we like to look at things holistically and we don't believe there is one best martial art, right? So let's dive right into the topic and um, Tony, what? What are your thoughts on what are the best martial arts styles for somebody who's trying to learn for self-defense or defend themselves? So as, as you know, you know, we look at things and use the term holistically, that 30,000 foot view. And over the years of studying violence, fear and aggression, we have been able to spot areas that are um, omitted accidentally from all martial arts. It could be a situational awareness component. It mm -hmm. could be a verbal de-escalation. It could be uh, multiple assailants. It, it, there's all these things that happen in the real world where self-defense is the is the uh, solution to the problem, mm -hmm. and martial arts wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we've we've talked before and offline. If you're a boxer, you're gonna pull it. You're gonna reach into your boxing bag, toolbox, and pull out a boxing move. You're not gonna think about restraining or grappling somebody. An analogy I like to use, like every every martial art that you study, you fall in love with it, you create a romantic relationship with the art, you develop one or two favorite moves, and what that does is it creates neural patterns in your brain that predispose you to look for those moves. Mm -hmm. That whole experience is completely visceral and physical and has nothing to do with managing fear, understanding scenarios, uh, you know, force, must parallel danger nowhere is that more drilled in and more important than people who conceal carry or you just don't pull out a gun and brandish it and go hey i don't want any trouble mm -hmm. right so you need these non-violent postures almost every classical tradition and combat sport avoids or ignores this area for no particular reason it's just that's just the way you practice mm -hmm. you're learning taekwondo you're learning jiu-jitsu you're learning krav uh and whatever it is the focus, most of the focus on the physical. Mm -hmm. So I have a very calculated answer, as you can you can hear. I'm not going to go, no, art number one, art yeah. number two. Anecdotally, and I want, I want your audience to track this, I've been, again, on hundreds and hundreds of podcasts, and I get asked the same question, uh, not as elegantly as you asked it, <laughs> but, but what's the best art for the street? And I always give a flippant, sarcastic answer. I say, art is for a museum. People are like, what? Like artist free museum. If you need to run in a self-defense situation, should you be pulling guard? No. If you need to pull guard, should you be doing a sidekick? Mm. And, and just to say that for those of you who are not familiar, guard is a jiu-jitsu technique where you're throwing someone in between your legs and you're kind of holding them on the ground. My ground. Yeah. Um, so the idea is like if, if you're, and I, I, I give these goofy metaphors, but 
if, uh, if all you know how to do is cook burgers and I come over and I go, man, I'm so start, I'm so hungry. Would you whip something up and you cook me a burger? And I go, dude, I'm a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. So not a problem. Like a sushi chef isn't going to cook a steak. He's going to work with fish. Mm-hmm. And I'm giving these goofy metaphors to realize that we all create these unconscious biases. If I gave you a choice, you could only pick your gun guy, mm-hmm. your martial arts, but your gun guy. You could only pick one. This is the only weapon that you can have in this in 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 this imaginary scenario. Just pick it. Just like real quick. Don't overthink this. A Derringer or a fifty caliber Barrett. Okay, um, I'm just gonna say Derringer. Okay. Um, what's interesting is your scenario is you're on a roof. You're being surrounded by bad guys they're hostiles they're 100 yards away and you got to protect your your home you got a problem now yes absolutely okay. yeah <laughs> right so what's what's funny about this is literally a hundred percent of the military law enforcement people gun people who i go would you rather have a derringer or or a 50 caliber barrett well most don't have the 50 caliber barrett mm-hmm. so most just emotionally go i'll take the long gun mm-hmm. and i go like this and i go uh uh, and here's another variation of it. Would you rather have a Swiss Army knife or a 50 caliber Barrett? Mm. Answer? Swiss Army knife. Oh, he's such a contrarian. <laughs> right? <laughs> Same Barrett. Barrett. How much does a Barrett weigh, you know? Oh, 30, 35 yeah. pounds, right? So imagine I'm giving you a Barrett. I go, here okay. you go, dude. Here you go, take it. And then I go, huh. right? So... I've done that demo a hundred times, thousand times over the last 30 years. The answer to what's the best martial art and the answer is to what's the best weapon is what's the scenario. Mm -hmm. You will have trouble clearing your house with a 50 caliber Barrett. It can be done, but it's a problem. Yeah. Where the Swiss Army knife is also you'd rather have a pistol or, you know, like like something you don't want the long gun and do it. Mm -hmm. So when people ask me, and I never give like, oh, you'll never get like answer one, answer two, answer three. Yeah. You're always going to get this. I, I call it the difference between, between substance and subject. Mm. Well, let me qualify like this. Hey, Tony, what's the best martial art for the street? I go, you know, artist for a museum. There was a time when martial arts were just martial. They were about fighting. And then they, they, they were diluted where now you're like standing in lines. You're learning how to punch. You're learning to kick. And the focus is on the technique, not the tactic. One of our maxims, you'll love this, is don't confuse technical with tactical. Mm-hmm. Tactically, if I pick up a stick to hit you, I'm not thinking about my grip, where should my foot go. It's a sudden fight. I pick something up, I smash you. If while I drop you to the ground, you go, your foot's in the wrong place. You know, like you like you didn't turk your body. You didn't. Tur- I'm like going, dude, I just dropped you with a stick. Yeah. I wasn't technical, but I was tactical. So I thought about this one day and I, I popped up and I said, you know what? How did people fight before martial arts were invite, in, invented? Like, think about that. Like, there was always violence on the mm-hmm. planet. Yeah. Like, tribes fought back hundreds of thousands of years ago. Modern man started roaming the earth uh, over 100,000 years ago. There had to have been fights like in The Walking Dead. We have no food. We want your food, right? But how did they fight? Well, like, was there a caveman kung fu studio? Mm-hmm. Was there a caveman karate studio? Hey, caveman kids, freaking go to, <laughs> right? Like, you're... Like the Karate Kid stance wasn't invented yet, right? Mm-hmm. So how did people fight? What was the first, first weapon ever used? Was it choking? Was it a rock smashing somebody? Then someone went, hey, you know that sharpened stick that we used to kill that animal to eat? We can stick that into opposing crimes, right? So the first weapon was the human weapon. We figured out how to kill with our hands. Then it was like, Here's a fucking rock. rock right? And a rock. And then it was a sharpened stick. And then it was a sharpened rock tied to a stick. Mm-hmm. Spear, right? Still trying to sue those cavemen. They stole them. <laughs> right? But, but here's the idea, guys. Like, think about this. This is such a cool concept. If you came running through the jungle at me and you started throwing a rock at me, what was the first thing I did? I did start a flinch, push away danger. I got my hands on you. It was all quarter extremity, cross extensor, smashing, if I smash with a rock, that's a fucking palm strike, mm-hmm. right? It's the same mechanism. And I thought about this and I went, how did cavemen fight? And then the connection was this. We are all human weapons. 
how can we reconnect to, and this isn't about like paleo self-defense, like how did caveman eat? How did cave, if this, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying inside of us, if we understood more about our neurobiology, more about our neuroscience, more about fear management, more about the radar that is fear, that is what is missing from self-defense. So when you ask me, what's the best martial art for a self-defense scenario, street scenario, I'm uh, like, I, and hopefully the metaphor was good. It's like, well, what's the best gun? Uh -huh. Well, if you're on your roof, a rifle's better. Yeah. If you're cheating at a card game, it's the wild, wild west. You want like wild, wild west. You want the Derringer in your arm uh -huh. because you're this close to the guy. So when you look at what's the best martial art, you got to also look at what is your scenario? Yeah. What do you need to do? Um, in 1980, I was interviewed uh, for Black Belt Magazine. My first interview, Black Belt Magazine asking me similar questions and I said something and and you you got a big brain so tell me what you think about this I said in 1980 when I was 20 years old I said there can be and should be as many self defense uh, systems as there are people practicing self defense I'll say that again there can be and should be as many self defense systems as there are people practicing self defense meaning when you understand the emotional, psychological, physical requirements to protect yourself and your family, that becomes your self-defense system. Mm -hmm. And that, like, you have kids. Yes. One, what was important to you in terms of what you would fight for, when you would fight, what you would do, what you would let go of, changed dramatically when your kid was born. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, like, every 10 years, your self-defense IQ changes. It morphs. You're an entrepreneur now. You got a family now. You you just realize, oh, uh, there are less police on the street now, and bad guys that aren't afraid of, you know, committing violence in broad daylight. What's now important? Is it my grappling? Is it my striking? Or is it my situational awareness? Mm -hmm. So this is a big long answer that sets up if you're if you've taken care of the emotional, psychological holistics of self defense, then you go ah, how can I become a better tactical athlete? How can I overcome my fear of getting hit? Mm -hmm. well, uh, what would I do if I was taken down to the ground? What would I do if there were multiple assailants? Well, suddenly, like if you got multiple assailants, having done some uh, uh, Taekwondo, some kicking arts, some Kyukushin guy, where I'm kicking from a distance, I'm controlling from a distance. What if somebody's up close and personal to me? Well, like a, a, a short system, understanding a little bit of Wing Chun or or uh, some Thai boxing, uh, you know, for clinching and quick elbows or some Cali. Every art has some wonderful stuff in their toolbox. I think the problem is that we fall in love with the martial art and we don't look at anything else. We become myopic. We got our blinders on. And then we create that dopamine relationship with the art and that can put us in danger in the street. Mm -hmm. Um, just to stop you there for a second, this is what I was talking about where in the beginning of the video that the answer may be different from what you're expecting because again, both Tony and I are, we're not, we're not about, let me backtrack a little bit. If you've watched our channel for a long time, you know we're not about technique or I should say that technique is a matter of style and what style you use is going to depend on many things. So it's kind of what I'm trying to get at is it really spills over to martial arts styles as well. It's hard to pick one or to prioritize because it's all going to depend on so many different variables. And is that what kind of what you're saying as well, right? Am I on track there, Tony? Yeah. Like, listen, there's a great book on tennis called The Inner Game of Tennis. Mm -hmm. And it's considered the encyclopedia of all tennis books. And I would make a joke in our seminars. I go, greatest book of tennis ever written. If you read it and you don't play tennis, you still can't play tennis. Mm -hmm. In other words, you still got to figure out your grip. Yeah. You still got to, oh, I missed the ball. You got to still work on proximity stands. I got to step and hit. I got to, oh, that shot didn't make it over the net. I don't have any torque. I got to learn how to get my hips in it. So I can use like this tennis metaphor as a, you don't have a, a system to even fight yet. So having an opinion about it, you need to, the martial arts stuff can create tactical fitness, overcome your fear of getting hit, closing the gap, mm -hmm. controlling distance, learning how to strike, learning how to kick, learning how to block, learning how to move. But don't confuse that with real sudden violence mm -hmm. and and what and what you're going to do. It, you know, in another one of our talks, I, I said like you can be 
like world-class IPSC, but that isn't the same as CQB. Yeah. Did you develop good weapon handling and gut management, you know, uh, trigger control, uh, 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 posture? I, 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 we have, we have uh, some operator and gunfighting courses in our programs. And when I was developing our gunfighting program, I would interview, because I was training SWAT and military for decades, I, anytime I learned that somebody was in a gunfight, I'd talk to him. Mm-hmm. There's one cop um, in Texas. He'd been in seven gunfights. He was a legend. Mm-hmm. Ronnie Parker. And I was sitting down with him the first time, and I said, Ronnie, i got to ask you about your gunfights because I'm putting together this gunfighting program. I go, first of all, did you win them? And he goes, I'm here, I'm here, ain't I, right? Like, I go, good, yeah, I thought so. Just making sure that <laughs> this wasn't sure a, this, just, just, yeah, wait, making sure this isn't a seance. <laughs> and then uh, I go, and I was close, so I'd been uh, training uh, uh, Houston and Dallas SWAT, and so we'd become friends, and I said, I got an interview for this, like, if you can't talk, you can. He said, I'm good, what do you want to know? I said, what stance were you in in all the gunfights? Mm-hmm. And he's like, do you chew in tobacco in a cup? And he goes, stance like you're not a stance in a gunfight mm-hmm. but if you go to the range they're going to say this is the yeah. stance to be in a gunfight mm-hmm. the problem is for the general public and i always say this for our hand-to-hand stuff if i said to you the only way you can get to the next level of my system is to get into 10 fights and this is a very very heavy concept miles to get to the next level in the system you got in 10 fights i don't care if you win or lose them but you got to get into 10 fights your subconscious brain will never pick an opponent that can kick you out of your ass. Mm-hmm. That's the predator-prey interaction. We, as, 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 as thinkers, the bad guy in the street isn't going where you're going, hey, look at that guy there. Let's, let's take him. And you go, are you kidding? Well, that guy, look at, he's got three guns on him. He's got a knife here. I recognize him from this. One of us is dying and the other's going to the hospital. Mm-hmm. If we thought this guy could decimate us, we pick another target. Absolutely. So, like, this is a very subtle thing, is that there's certain experiences that we can't ever experience unless it happens to us. But we're putting all of our faith in, like, somebody who's never experienced that, saying, here's what you should do. Mm-hmm. We, got to, we got to bring back critical thinking, right? And, and go, what's my scenario? Does this have value? Mm-hmm. So now when you're doing jujitsu or wrestling, you're going... And if you're coming at it from the self-defense perspective, you're asking yourself, <clears throat> what am I trying to understand here? Um, just to stop you there for a second, Tony. So just to drive in the point and correct me if I'm wrong, it is about understanding that all these styles are going to provide something that you can use in your given situation. And the problem is we don't know every single situation. So if you are studying a particular style, you always have to kind of bring it back. And if you're doing it for self-defense, not just competition sure. or combat sports, you have to have that holistic view, which you've already touched on, and really think, is it really addressing something that you're going to potentially use in real life? Is that in my... Uh, 100%. Uh, a, a great metaphor is um, I can teach you how to drive. Teach you, you know, shift gears, that's the gas, that's the brake, go fast, go slow, watch for brake lights. I can give you all stuff to think about, and you're a good driver... And then I, I say, go, and you're going to look at me and go, where should I go? Because mm-hmm. you don't have a map. Yeah. And if I get you lost and you don't have a map, you're lost. So now, think about when you, every time you've been lost, have you ever been lost in a car? Mm-hmm. Your situational awareness is totally compromised. Your personal safety has de- degraded immediately. So you're like looking for a landmark or an address or some signpost and you're driving like this. You ever been behind somebody who's lost? Yeah. You're like, come on, fuck, right? Let's go, <laughs> pull over. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, if you don't understand the landscape, if you don't understand the D1, detect and avoid situational awareness elements, if you don't understand the pre-fight components of D1 and D2, the, you know, how to de-escalate, <clears throat> how to manage fear, how to control your mind, how to distract a bad guy. It doesn't matter that you're a world-class Thai, Thai boxer mm-hmm. or that you're a great grappler or a great boxer because you need to wait to get close to the nail to hammer it. And, and just to clarify, yeah. this is, uh, so we've had many discussions, uh, Tony and I, about this, and it's, it, 
it is about where if you're watching this, you know, the title is a martial arts styles that uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, Tony recommends. But the, the truth is that you're, a lot of martial arts styles traditionally are missing certain components, which Tony has just talked about, that big picture, everything together. And so I think kind of to bringing it back to the people who are watching this video and you're, you know, we already mentioned we're not, it is not going to be your standard styles. We're not saying, okay, jujitsu, this or that, but to give you guys some value and help, what do you, let's bring it, let's go a little bit deeper. So mm -hmm. it's not about the style. And let's assume now that our viewers understand that they have to take this holistic approach. Uh, there's the pre-fight, which mm -hmm. Tony talks about. Um, and that, you know, because a lot of martial arts these days, they teach you, you know, you're right there and that you're already in the thick of it, but there's a lot of ways you can avoid things and, you know, um, do things to uh, prepare yourself for a fight, so not right there in the thick of it. So let's break it down to skill sets or, or not styles, but what do you think are important skill sets of that martial arts teach that our viewers should think about so <clears throat> and, 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 yeah and, and you just made me think of something here it was actually my very first student in 1980 was having a bully situation in school he's 15 years old i was 20 and i was teaching him and it was like a month into private lessons so he's had four lessons once a week and he's angry he'd come in he's like this kid man I'm like man i can't wait to fight him and i go mitch do you know how to throw a punch properly? He's like, no. I go, do you know how to move your head? No. Do you know how to block a punch? No. I said, then you need to avoid a fight. In other words, he, he, had no, he had no foundation. It doesn't matter that he knew who the threat was and they were going to fight. I was like, your school's not doing anything. The guy's like stalking you, like he's, he's bullying you. You need to avoid this until you're ready to go, okay, I, win or lose, I'm ready, ready to stand up for myself. And although this, this is a 15 year old kid in a bully situation, the, 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 the light bulb moment from the story is he wanted to fight, but he had no tools. Mm -hmm. So that's how, when someone says to me, what martial arts should I do? A lot, a lot of people come to me, they do a your own bodyguard course, or they do, we've got some online programs or home, human weapon system programs, stuff like that, where they learn the pre-fight, the psychology, the fear management, the situational awareness. Now, they go, now you want to go, well, what if somebody takes me to the ground? The hardest guy to take to the ground is somebody who's not afraid of the ground. The easiest way to control somebody on the ground is if you practice certain moves on the ground. The easiest way to get off the ground if you got knocked to the ground is to have experience from ground fighting and practice getting up. Well, you're not going to learn any of that boxing, Thai boxing, kickboxing, Taekwondo, uh -huh. Tai Chi, right? Aikido. So you got to go to a jiu-jitsu school. So now your job is to find a school where you like the vibe and the personality and the instructor to like seems cool. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, these people look like they're learning and having fun. And that's part of what I meant by critical thinking. Just don't, you know, don't believe the trademark or the hype or whatever. Go and watch a couple of classes. But what you want to do is this. It's, it's no different, folks, if, uh, than protein, fat, and carbs. If you don't understand nutrition, you can't uh, improve your energy systems or, or maintain the physique you want. You need to understand your macros, protein, fat, and carbs. Mm -hmm. So to understand how to manage violence, there are things you need to understand. And it's not just, I got a gun, I went to the range, I got my CCW. You don't understand anything about violence just because you can shoot a target that's not shooting back at you. Mm -hmm. So every martial art potentially, like if you said to me, uh, I need to learn small circle jujitsu, which is all finger and wrist stuff, and I go, don't waste your time with that. And you go, well, wait a minute. I'm a nurse in a hospital and I, I deal with uh, uh, emotionally disturbed uh, patients and I can't strike them and I can't hit them. And I want to know if somebody hits me, what are things I can do mm -hmm. to control them? I go, oh, yeah. okay, so maybe some Aikido and Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, yeah. So you understand exactly what you need because this is your area of operation. This is your arena. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the imaginary arena for all of us is and if I say to you, describe a self-defense scenario, you will say, maybe not you, because you're 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 too philosophical in a good way, but I've done, I've asked this question a million times. I'm exaggerating, maybe nine hundred thousand times. <laughs> I've said, describe a self-defense situation that you're afraid to have happen, or a, a self-defense situation that you imagine. Every single answer is a physical altercation. 
bad guy grabbed me like this. Somebody throws a punch. Two guys are here. They're about to do this. I'm getting pulled into a car. They're all physical. Nobody says, yeah, I had a bad feeling about uh, being followed. So I, uh, I did some counter surveillance stuff and I don't know if I was being followed, but I, I safely left the scene. Like that's not, yeah. that's not an exciting movie. If you Google the definition for self-defense in, in the dictionary, Merriam-Webster, most of them say something to the effect of the physical act of protecting your property or your life. Mm -hmm. The dictionary doesn't even include situational awareness and de-escalation and avoidance. It just assumes everything's physical. Yeah. We rewrote the definition. Hopefully in my lifetime, this will become the universal definition. The decision to choose safety when danger is imminent. You know that every, like that. every yeah. victim of violence who lived to tell the tale said they had a bad feeling. Mm -hmm. Imagine if that individual had been taught like, hey, when, as a guy, when your, uh, uh, hey, go get gas light goes on, right? Almost empty uh, in your car. Mm -hmm. As a guy, do you immediately go to the gas station or as a guy, do you go, ah, I can probably drive home and I can probably, I like, I'm always running on empty. Uh -huh. It's stupid. It's not, you know, but there's lots of times I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to fill up and now I'm at like seven miles. And I know there's reserve, but you're playing a game. So our intuitive radar in a violent encounter sends an alarm. It's our internal GPS. It says like, hey, make a legal U-turn, get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know what to do. They don't understand it takes courage to back down and avoid a fight. But if I want to strike or hit, it predisposes me to stay closer, mm -hmm. right? So I know I'm not giving a definitive answer, but you want to learn how to grapple. You want to learn how to strike. You want to learn how to kick. And then you got to think, well, if I got multiple assailants, what do I do? Well, I need to learn how to run and need to learn how to distraction. I might have to strike this guy and kick this guy. Then I want to start thinking about improvised weapons. So you, you start looking at martial arts very selfishly. What attribute can this develop? that will make me safer a lot right i like that so and, I, and that then sorry for interrupting yeah that that doesn't include remember bruce lee when he fought wong jackman uh i don't know if you remember the fight and they started fighting and 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 uh, uh his opponent got scared of bruce's like tenacity and he turned around and run and bruce is chain punching him in the back of the head they everyone there described it the guy's running away and he's straight blasting him in the back of the head drops him and and you know, the fight's over. And Bruce did what I talk about in scenario training. He goes, wow, the guy ran away. I had to chase him down and now I'm out of breath. And he started including and intensifying skipping and sprints. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with his biomechanic. He recognized there was a potential capability gap, a flaw in his speed and stamina and endurance. Who thinks that way? Mm -hmm. Right? Aerobics gets you to the fight. Anaerobics gets you through the fight. How many people think about that when they're training? Mm -hmm. yeah, so then it's, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and so, so I think that it's, it's interesting because this kind of goes full circle to what we talked about or what I mentioned earlier in the video, not necessarily one style, and how our, our view on self defense is that it's not really, it can't be bucketed into one martial art. And this is why it's just, it goes back to Tackle Hive. It's not really about the techniques. It's about the principles and situation matters. And so I, I feel, and I know I'm, I apologize for those of you who are thinking like there's, there's one, but this is real talk because we're not talking about martial arts for combat sports or if you're going into MMA, then probably knowing jujitsu is a really, really important thing, you know, learning kickboxing. But we're talking about in the real world where anything can happen and the situation is different. Um, Tony has already talked a little bit about um, his programs and for example, their, their, their look at self-defense or their perspective is it's an entire, it's an entirety, the holistic view of it, the pre-fight. And you guys can get for more, more information. We'll leave some uh, information on Tony's programs down in the description below. So I think the, the message here in this video is that there are skill sets that you can pick up from any martial art that you can use. But the reality is that one martial art, it may not prepare you for everything. And so you do have to look out there and go, kind of going back to Bruce Lee, you know, it's, or even and anyone nowadays that mi the mixed martial arts you can mm -hmm. take from different styles now. So um, we already talked a little bit, you know, maybe a grappling art and uh, striking art, maybe some weapons, but it's always going to depend. 
And I liked how you mentioned where now it becomes, you need to, you know your situation better than us. Mm -hmm. You will need to figure out what is going to be more relevant. And that's kind of your, your North Star. 100%. So there you guys have it. This is coming from a world-class instructor, expert, self-defense expert, who knows what he's talking about. He's been there, done that. And this is not the, again, that typical video that's going to say, okay, number one, jujitsu, number one, uh, number two, this. But this is the reality of self-defense, guys. You do, you know, it's not that shiny object. It's not uh, always clear cut, but you do have to prepare yourself comprehensively. So, Tony, I really appreciate it. You always have a lot of great insight. I can always tell the passion and the experience because there's, you just exude a lot of uh, information and just, it's awesome. So, I hope you guys take this to heart. Tony, any last words uh, for our viewers? The, the the most important thing, and we already said it, Miles, it's, it's, it's you've got to take that holistic view of the whole thing and you got to look at yourself, where you are in your life. Are you a family man? Do you have your kids with you? Uh, are, are you a female? Are you traveling a lot? What are the skills I need to understand and and really deeply like 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 running through your blood understand? Because if we're talking about real violence and sudden violence, man, it happens fast. Mm -hmm. And and you know, to you know, everyone talks about head on a swivel stuff, but then we practice like the physical over and over again. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 most important stuff I can tell you is is you look you look at your scenarios because you know your life better and you go how do i stay safe that's sort of what we call i didn't really get onto this our true safety model mm -hmm. so the overarching umbrella in our entire system is choose safety not to be confused with playing it safe that's a boring life but what is the safest thing i can do right now mm -hmm. i got a bad feeling what's the safest thing i could do right now this person just said to me this or that it was offensive what's the safest thing i could say right now mm -hmm. and how am i shifting those psychological gears all you know in terms of the 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 headline for this like what are the best martial arts uh any art that helps you understand how to manage fear to experience uh contact to make contact with targets recognizing that that violence can happen on the ground standing on an angle uh they all have value but and this isn't a a put down it's just an observation it's just like it's just like saying, yeah, electric cars are great until you run out of the charge, mm -hmm. and if there's nowhere to plug it in, you're stuck. Yeah. So that art's great unless you there's a unless you run you know, into a roadblock or runs yeah. it, you're, you're you run into a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, you know how can you be more self sufficient? And and like I said at some point during the talk, imagine if I said I can help you create a self defense system unique to you not based on anyone else's martial art. One last story, you'll appreciate this. You ever, uh, did you ever read the book, Wandering Taoist? I think I asked you that. No, I didn't okay. read that one. So the theme of the book is grandfather is um, teaching his, his grandson Kung Fu. And the grandson says, Grandpa, who is the deadliest fighter in all of China? And he lists, you know, so-and-so who is the monkey style king and this guy was the grasshopper and this guy was the lizard and this guy was the crane, you know, all the different styles, right? This guy was a killer, this guy's, and he lists all of the different animal styles and it's so well written. And I'm reading this in the eighties and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all into, I'm into all, I love martial arts, right? Oh, this is great. And then the grandfather says, they were all very, very deadly, very skilled. He says, but the most dangerous guy was so-and-so, I don't remember his name, so-and-so, because he based his system on how humans fought, not how animals fought. Mm -hmm. And I remember guffawing, going, no kidding. Like, praying mantis, right? We've seen the movies. Yeah. I've never been attacked by a praying mantis or a monkey or a lizard or, you know, like, and so, and again, it sounds like I'm making fun, I'm not, but it's like, what if we, what if we sat back and we went, how do bad guys attack good guys? When do bad guys attack good guys? When am I vulnerable? What would I have to do to weather this to get home to see my family safely? Mm -hmm. And that changes that whole perspective. Yeah, and I appreciate that. So I, I think that is a, a great way to end uh, the video because it's just, it's just emphasizing the point that 
martial arts styles, they're great, but true violence is not necessarily, doesn't necessarily fit in those particular styles. So you just have to be smart enough, you know, be a critical thinker, uh, get out there, understand that there are limitations, but there are also value in everything. And then, you know, to train as much as you possibly can. I know everyone's limited, but it is about taking the best from what you can, from what you have access to, and then making it your own and, and hopefully adapting to your situation. Anyway, uh, Tony, I really appreciate it. As always. And, uh, I hope you guys uh, got some value out of this. Uh, let us know if you have any questions uh, for, for us or for Tony in the comments below. Don't forget to uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next time.